It looks like a little beer, but it's sparkling and water. Just in case you're judging me. Right then, this is um this is gonna be an exciting one. I've been wanting to make this video for some time, and a lot of you guys have been asking me for this video for some time. So this is my how I buy my parts and kind of the best tips and tricks to buy your parts video. That's a terrible name for this video. Hope I didn't call it that. So I'm in the middle of making um, a budget build, but not just like budget builds I've done in the past, a very kind of like as nice as I can possibly make it without spending incredible, incredible amounts of money. Um, so this is kind of like almost part one of that. And the next video is going to be more about kind of the frame and the restoration of the frame, which if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about the frame, um, but I'll share it later at the end of this video as well. Um, and in a couple of videos time will be the build and so on. So strap in, we've got some content coming. I get asked a lot about the parts. Um, some people just ask me like how much I spend. I get a lot of people saying like how much is that, how much is that, how much is that. Um, and I realized uh, lately I don't really put a lot of that detail into the videos. I certainly don't put it in the comments. Um, so I'm gonna try and start putting a list of parts, um, sharing prices and kind of where I got them in the comments. But I thought this video is a nice one to do to kind of like almost wrap up everything I've done up until now. Um, don't worry, I'm not gonna go through everything I've done up to now, but just like kind of like an overview of kind of what I do. Um, so uh, the first place I thought we'd visit is uh, wheels. I should probably say at this point as well, this is very much focusing on 26 inch mountain bikes. Um, I might do one a little bit more around kind of fixed gear and single gear bikes and like kind of road bikes that I've done in the past and stuff like that in the future. So let me know if you wanna know more about those kinds of bikes. But as you know, we mainly do mountain bikes around here, so that's why it's all about mountain bikes. Okay, so wheels. Um, there's two ways of buying wheels. You've got the new ones and you've got the second hand wheels. The new ones, in my opinion, come in two versions as well. Budget and then cheap. The cheap ones are kind of like uh, Rally True Build. Uh, you can get these on a lot of websites in the UK and even Amazon for like under 20 pounds usually, or no more than 20 pounds. Um, they have a screw-on hub, so you do need to use older parts or new old parts, things like that. Um, but uh, they're pretty solid, and if it's a flip bike, it's a really cheap way of getting some wheels. The budget wheels, um, if you went to like places in the UK like Halfords or um, a lot of online websites as well, um, any 26 inch wheels from those places are usually going to be potentially by rally still again just because they do make a lot of these parts um, but uh, kind of like yeah entry level 26 inch mountain bike wheels these usually have uh, a normal cassette hub um, and then also disc brake mounts uh, the ones that I use which will be on the display right now um, these ones are from Halfords they cost about 130 pounds um, but uh, they're solid they're made really really well I mean they're probably quite heavy as well, but like for type of riding I do and for commuting and stuff, they've only gone slightly out of true and they're pretty easy to get back into true. So in my opinion, they're pretty good. Um, another uh, budget wheel that uh, I want to tell you about as well is from uh, Airbike. Um, they make some really good wheels with some serious engagement on the hubs as well. Um, but they are disc brake only, so they're going to be for you kind of like more modern retro bikes or for you smart people that have disc brake conversions. They work on those as well. So when it comes to second hand wheels, uh, second hand wheels are kind of hard to find because you could probably find some second hand wheels on eBay right now and they'll be dirt cheap, but they'll be absolutely dog shit and you won't want to buy them. But there are some wheels out there, and if you spend a little bit of extra money, you can get some decent wheels. Um, I'm gonna link uh, a couple of ones I found right now that maybe are on bid or kind of going uh, at the moment, just to give you an example. Um, but this is two sets that I bought recently, uh, which I can't remember the prices for these two sets right now, so they'll also be on the pictures. Um, but these ones are eBay. Uh, this set was, uh, I made an offer, and I got it for this price. They were on there for at least 20 pounds more, and I think these ones, I made an offer as well to get that price. So remember, eBay, make your offers. Sometimes people are desperate to get rid of these things.
Right then, so on to topic number two, which is tires, which is potentially one of my favorite things in the world to buy. I buy lots and lots and lots of tires. I buy my tires from all sorts of places, uh, but one of the biggest websites I use, and I use this for a lot of my components, is Bike In. Uh, they are they do lots of outdoor and activity sports and they have lots of different variations variations of their website uh, the bike in website has i think i looked at it when i was doing this research over like 26,000 different tires uh, which is seems like a crazy amount to filter through uh, but if you do filter through to the 26 inch 26 inch tires um there's some pretty decent stuff in there um, one of the big brands that stands out on there is CST CST um, I've used a couple of times on some builds I don't really know a lot about the brand themselves but they are reasonably budget um, you can get tires on bike in from CST for about six pound a tire which is crazy talk but you can also just I'm scrolling through the website literally now as with as I'm doing this um, there's like uh, there's some continentals cross kings they're like 11 pounds a tire there is some fat franks the schwalbe ones 26 uh, 26 inch they are 12 pound 99 like it goes on um i got a lot of my dth which are these bad boys up here uh, they they're all from bike in i think they are normally about 20 pounds a tire let me see if i can find them so they are currently 22 pounds on that website per tire which i think spending about 40 pounds on a set of decent tires that's pretty good. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna mention when it comes to tires, because a lot of people ask about it, is Billy Bonkers. Um, there's three types of Billy Bonkers. Uh, they, there's the Tan, which doesn't really exist anymore. They haven't remade those for a long time. Um, there's Bronze, which is the ones that everybody thought was fake for a second. Um, I certainly did. I bought some, they arrived, and I was like, what the hell is this? Um, but uh, that's a new color, which is Bronze. I personally believe that's probably what's replaced Tan now, because Tan just, I've not seen them for sale for a long time. Um, if you have, let us know in the bottom, in the comments because I know a lot of people still look for them. Uh, and then the last ones are the black ones. The black ones have just been restocked for a 2022 version, um, and there are a lot that you can get them in a lot of places. Um, I found mine on eBay. I forget exactly how much they were. I'll put the price right here. Um, but uh, yeah, Billy Bonkers. I'm not. I'm not a year-round Billy Bonkers kind of guy. I quite like them in the winter just because there's quite a lot of grip. But they're quite noisy, so DTH is my other one that I always go to. Yeah, do your research, but you can find some decent tires out there. But bike in is my big tip. Right then, so cranks is the next one, and slash chain rings. Uh, cranks, uh, a lot of people pick up the Amazon specials. Um, I don't hate them, but uh, I do think you could probably spend a little bit more and get some that are quite cool. Um, the example I have is uh, a brand in particular is, and I may be saying this wrong, uh, Truvative. Truvative? Truvative. This brand here. Um, they are, uh, they're owned by SRAM, so essentially it's the SRAM cranks. Um, these cranks are reasonably entry level stuff apart from some of the older stuff. The older stuff is some, I've got some crazy light ones um, and some. They're all the ones that I have from them are really, really good. Um, so if you search for those guys on eBay and pick up some secondhand ones on there, generally people are just getting rid of them because they're just, they're pretty decent, but they're not special enough for them, which I think's a shame because I think they're great. Uh, the other cranks you can use are the ones you've just teared off that bike you just bought. For example, like this. These ones are Shimano, I don't know, FCM 550s, nothing special, um, but these were really light. And the, the cranks themselves, if you put some actual elbow gre effort grease, uh, if you polish the hell out of these things, they look insanely good. Um, the biggest thing with these though is the fact that they have five bolts. Five bolt chain ring, especially if you're gonna convert it to uh, one by systems, kind of like what I do, uh, they're a little bit harder to come by, so, my go-to is actually one of these chain rings from Medium. Uh, they are a Paris-based company uh, making chain rings and components for kind of old to new bikes. Um, so these are really, really good. Uh, I think they're about 40 euros, 40 something euros. The price is right here. Um, but these are really, really good. And uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, but I rate these ones. 
Uh, honorable shout out for chain rings. Um, the company that I buy most of my chain rings from, uh, it's actually two places. First one is gonna be um, Works Components. Uh, these chain rings are super, super good. Uh, I think they push them towards downhill riders as well, so they probably take some serious beatings. Um, and then the other one is Uber Components. Uber Components make a lot of other really cool stuff as well, but their chain rings are really good. And I think both these companies, I know Uber co Components are, um, but they're made in the UK, so that's a plus if you're UK based. This is uh, my favorite topic and probably the one you're all waiting for, uh, which is frames. Uh, so the, the biggest question I have is where you get all your frames from. Um, I get my frames from pretty much three places. Uh, one is eBay, two is Facebook Marketplace, and then the third one is if anybody has an old bike, they try to give it to me. Um, there's two ways of buying frames, um, complete and singular. Uh, when I say singular, I mean without all the components. Um, if you can, I'd buy a complete bike. Uh, going back to that last bit about the crank sets, like a lot of these old 90s mountain bikes had fairly decent crank sets on them and you could polish them up, make them new again. Um, so that's going to save you money. Um, on the other hand, you may end up with a load of junk that you don't want and you need to now store it or get rid of it somehow, which is, can be a little bit tricky. So if you are going to buy a complete bike, be careful on how crusty, crusty they are. Um, I love a crusty bike, but there is sometimes too much crust when you know in the end you're just going to end up having to scrap most of it. But if the frame's worth it, it's still probably worth that. So I mean, it depends on the frame. And then the other way, of course, is just singular um, on its own. So frame only uh, is happens quite often on eBay. I don't often see the marketplace, but on eBay, lots of people like myself and like you guys who build bikes have surplus frames every now and then and bang it on eBay. Um, those are the ones you're looking for. So Facebook Marketplace, on the other hand, that's you're pretty much only going to find f fully built bikes. Facebook Marketplace generally is a place where people have stuff laying around and they need to get rid of it nice and quickly and they just want to get shot. Um, that's where I found most of my gems, that we would call them. Um, the specialised rock hopper that's just behind me here, that was a Facebook Marketplace find. That cost me £28. Um, it was fully built. The only things that weren't original on it was the tyres and the seat. Everything else was completely original. Um, battered. It needed a lot of work. But um, £28 for a rock hopper. See what I'm saying? Now, we can talk about frames all day long, um, but the main tip that I wanted to kind of share with you guys is how I search for bikes. Um, if I went on eBay right now, or even Facebook Marketplace, and put in specialized rock hopper, um, I will pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a bike. Simple as that. But if I type in bike and spend the rest of my day searching through the endless amounts of bikes, on one of these two places, um, I might get lucky and find a specialized rock hopper that's been in someone's garage for the last 10 years um, and they just need to get out of the way so they can fit their new lawnmower in. That's my golden tip for finding bikes. Uh, group sets and brakes are kind of boring, um, but I want to just share it really quickly. Um, my go-to group sets are actually SRAM, um, if you're going Neo Retro this is and buying modern stuff. Um, I buy uh, the X, X3, uh, is an, a 7 to 8 speed uh, derailleur, um, and then I partner that, partner that with the 7 or 8 speed shifter, depending on which one, which one I'm going for. I think they're like £20 for the, the radio, maybe less than that. £10 for the shifter, super, super cheap. Um, but they work really, really well. Uh, brakes, I use uh, some Shimano V brakes. I can't remember the model, but they'll be on the screen right here. Um, and then I use uh, Avid uh, V brake levers. Um, again, pretty cheap. That, that setup is probably about £40, but it works super, super well. But what you can also use are the cantilevers that were already on that bike. You can't go wrong with some canties. <laughs> I wrote that joke. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is hardware. Hardware is another thing I could probably talk about for days and days and days and days. I want to start being a lot more specific and kind of share a bit more detail in my hardware that I'm using when I build these bikes. So 
expect that more in the future. Uh, but a kind of a, a kind of a top line is kind of don't buy cheap. It's very easy to go onto Amazon and spend ten pounds on some titanium, probably aluminium bolts. Um, and then you put them on your stem and your headset and then it, it smashes off and you smash your front teeth out. I'm not about that. Um, a great place to get titanium bolts in uh, the UK is Uber Bikes um, and also uh, Capsmiths. Both those links will be below. Um, I think they both ship globally as well, but uh, have a look for like a titanium bolt place. Don't buy them on Amazon because they probably won't be titanium. They'll be something else. But um, also within the hardware kind of category is seats grips and pedals i have very kind of uh, exact taste when it comes to my seats grips and pedals the grips kind of change every now and then i was really into kind of the vans waffle grips for a long time uh, they're really really sick grips uh, i also really like the nuke proof horizon i think they're called grips they're super nice uh, i've used all sorts of lock on grips in the past my current favorite go-to grip is um, these death grips uh, these ones are, there you go, uh, these are lock-on grips, uh, they kind of taper at the end as well, so when you put them onto the bar you have to hammer it on um, and it squeezes at both ends, which is really good, but you can also get these uh, like little, like uh, what are they called? Like the grip, the rings that go on the grips, the bit actually that grips and tightens with the bolt and stuff. But you can get different colours. They do a bunch of different colours and you can match them with the rest of your bike, which is right up my street. Seats, again, are very specific to you and your knees and kind of like how you like. I am obsessed with charged spoons. I have tons of charged spoons. That bike has a charged spoon. That has a charged spoon. There's another charged spoon up there. The bike's around the corner. There's at least three or four charged spoons in that shed around there. Everything's charged spoons because I like them. You might not like them. I highly recommend them though. You've got to at least try them once. Um, pedals, I love Nuke Proof pedals. Uh, I have a new set here at the moment. Uh, these ones here, they're super comfortable. Uh, they're nice, f big and wide. I like them for commuting. I like them for mountain biking. Um, so yeah, big fan of these. But again, you'll find something that you need. You'll just find something you like and then you'll probably stick with it forever. This is mine. <laughs> okay, and that kind of brings us to the end of another video. Um, that was very different to what we usually do around here. So uh, let me know if you liked it, please comment below. Uh, and if you're new around here because of that video, please subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got a lot of builds coming up, including the one that I may tease right this second. Did you see it? Yeah, that was quick, wasn't it? Uh, I've been building that and um, it's nearly finished. So next week's video will be on that bike so uh yeah oh if you're trying to buy my stickers at the moment my website is currently down um check out on instagram because uh it's being rebuilt uh, and i'll be launching it with some new stickers and some new merch very soon so um if you're looking for stickers and you can't find buy, give me a minute i'll be back and that's it if you enjoyed this video uh, and you can't wait until next week why don't you uh watch that one it's a good one and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.